everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make a chili pot pie. To go alongside that we're going to have a roasted lime flavored corn on the cob, some Yukon gold roasted potatoes with lemon, and then for dessert we're going to make some snickerdoodle cookies. So we're going to get started on the chili. Now in this pan I have just some very lean ground beef that I have browned and I have broken it apart with what has become one of my favorite little tools and that is this little um, meat separator apparatus. I love this thing. It really is very, very handy and it's, it's a hard plastic so it's not going to scratch your pot or pan. Now I am using an enamel coated cast iron pan because I have it. If you don't have something that will go in straight into the oven, you will need to transfer your dish your, um, when you get the chili made into an oven proof baking dish because we are going to end up in the oven. I've got one green bell pepper that I'm going to dice and put in my chili. Now I have lean ground beef and I did not have a lot of fat. So what I did was I just took a paper towel and um, just, you know, cleaned up any of the grease or sopped up any of the grease in there. Let me get my little, my little seeds off. I'm just going to add the green pepper and then an onion to my meat mixture and let them start softening. And chili is one of my favorite things. I absolutely love chili and I make it quite often. And you could, for the basis of this, use your favorite chili recipe, whatever that would be. Just dicing up a green pepper if you have some already done. Um, you know, a lot of times in the grocery store, they will sell the pre-chopped up peppers and onions as your base, and you could use that if you have it. If you don't have a green pepper, you could use a red pepper or an orange or yellow pepper. Alrighty, sharp knife. And just gonna add this to it as I go. Now I've got one onion here. Pull my trash can over a little bit. I'm gonna dice up this onion and put in there into the chili and let it start softening. This is one, of, you could do this part and just put this in your crock pot if you wanted to, and that would be fine. Okay, we're gonna mince up an onion. You could use, now I'm using ground beef, but if you wanted to use ground turkey or ground chicken, you could do that, or even ground pork. Or you could actually use sausage. If you wanted to brown sausage, it would, it would add a wonderful flavor to this. So you could mix it up however you want to do it. Add in my onion. This one's not making me cry. I might have spoke too soon. But so far, so good. The basis for so many recipes, onion and peppers, so many. Most definitely onion for most soups and things. Okay. Now we're gonna get this in the skillet. I'm gonna stir this around. And I just want to let those onions and um, peppers start softening a little bit. Going to add my spices to it because as you know, I don't like to add the spices after I've added the liquid. I'm going to add just about half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, some four teaspoons of chili powder and a teaspoon of ground cumin. 
Oh, you can smell that mm, instantly. If you have some oregano, you could add a little bit of oregano to this dried oregano. Dried oregano is actually very common in Mexican food. There's a Mexican oregano that's really good. Very similar in flavor to regular Greek oregano, but so you could use either one that you wanted. Now I'm gonna add one can, four ounce can of diced green chilies. If you don't have this and you have a jalapeno, you could add minced this up real fine. If you like your chili really, really spicy, you could add both. I'm just going to add the green chilies, but if you have a jalapeno, it's really good in this. I'm adding two cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. I'm gonna stir that all together. Turn it down just a little bit, because I'm just gonna let this kind of simmer. And then I have two cans. Now I got um, one light red and one dark red, but you could do both light, both dark. You could do black beans, like one can of black beans and one can of kidney beans or all black beans, whatever you want. But you want about four cups of beans. So I'm going to just turn this down. Needs a little bit more liquid. Now, if you find you need a little bit more liquid, you could add one can of tomato sauce, and I'm going to. Or you could add a little bit of chicken broth or just water, but I like the added flavor of the um, tomato sauce because I want it to be a little bit saucy, not liquidy like a soup, but a little saucier. There, that's perfect. Now, I'm just going to cover this and let this simmer for about 20 minutes until those flavors meld together. This can totally be made ahead and, um, or put in your crock pot, let it simmer all day while you're gone, and then when you come home, put the topping on it, pop it in the oven, and you can have dinner done in no time. So. That's just the basis for our chili. Now, while that's simmering, we are going to make some potatoes. Now, all I've done, I'm gonna go over here and drain these because I peeled them ahead of time because you've seen me peel potatoes a lot. So I've got about two pounds. I'm using Yukon Gold, but you could use whatever kind of potato that you have. I'm going to zest a couple of lemons and juice a couple of lemons right over my potatoes. Okay, I'll just show you one. Then I'm going to add some lemon juice. I love these little lemon squeezer things. Then I'm going to add some, I'm going to do the other lemon, and I'm going to add some olive oil or canola oil, a couple of tablespoons. Mix that all together, put it on a flat baking dish, pop it in a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes till they're nice and golden and cooked all the way through. I'm going to take a quick break, just get these in the oven. When I come back, we will get started on the corn and the cornbread topping. I'll be back in just a minute.
Alrighty, now our potatoes are roasting in the oven, our chili is simmering, and we're gonna make a quick and easy roasted corn on the cob that we're gonna actually put into the oven. I have four ears of corn and just some cubed up butter. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat. If you don't want the heat, you don't have to put that in. And a little bit of salt and pepper to your taste, whatever you like. I'm actually going to zest a lime. I'm actually gonna zest a couple of limes. Now, that cayenne pepper is pretty strong. Uh, these happen to be key limes because that is all my store had. So they're very, very little. But if you get the regular Persian limes, you probably will only need maybe one, but I'm gonna do two because these are small. They're good, but they're small. You only want the green part of the lemon. You do not want to get that white um, pithy part. Okay, that looks good. All right, now let's put the zest in there. That has a lot of flavor. You can instantly smell that lime. Oh, it smells so good. Going to cut these in half and I'm gonna juice them using my same old juicer here into the butter and lime zest mixture. If you just, for whatever reason, don't like the taste of lime, you could do the same thing with lemon, but lime really does add a different, different kind of flavor. It's really good. And I like corn roasted in the oven. Of course, if it's barbecue season and you're outside and you wanna put this on your grill, go right ahead, it would be delicious. I think that's plenty. Don't need that other one. Now we're just gonna kind of stir that together. Take a fork, and that is a tiny little fork that I'm not getting any leverage on. I don't know where that came from. Let me get a better fork here. Just kind of mash the butter with that zest and so on. Now I have four sheets of just nonstick aluminum foil. I'm gonna take one ear of corn and you wanna kind of divide this mixture into four pieces. Just kind of plop that corn right on top, roll it up. And just put it on a, a baking dish and repeat the process. You can either put it on the bottom, it doesn't matter, it's gonna melt in the oven. Just make sure you do get a little bit of that juice and that zest with it. Of course, this recipe is very easily doubled or tripled, depending on how many people you are feeding. Mm. I love corn on the cob, love it. And in the summertime, I like it a lot. I mean, I cook it on the grill, roast it in the oven. It's good just boiled in the, uh, you know, on the stove with just some butter. It's good. And that quick and that easy, you have a delicious corn on the cob that's flavored a little differently than just regular corn. And it goes great with any Mexican dish. So we're gonna pop this in a 350 degree oven. About the same amount of time, 20, 25 minutes, until it's cooked through. It just, you know, you don't have to be exact on that one. It's fine either way. Let me clean up my mess here. And we're gonna get started on the topping for my chili. Now, the chili has been simmering away. So we're gonna get started on the topping for it. Now I have in this bowl uh, some flour, all-purpose flour, some cornmeal. There's some salt and some ice water. Just gonna stir that together. Okay. And I'm gonna cut in some butter using my pastry cutter. Now, if you don't have a pastry cutter, you could use um, 
two forks or two knives or your fingers even. Sometimes I like to get it started with the, pap with the pastry cutter and then I'll show you what you can do. If you don't have one of these little tools, which actually they're very, very handy to have. But if you don't have one, let me show you what you can do. Fingers, and just take in there into your mixture and then just start smushing it in between your fingers. And then take your um, mixture and kind of rub it between your hands. And what happens is you end up with long pieces of butter which is what you want and that's going to just create just a pocket of deliciousness inside your cornmeal mixture. You just want to get the bigger pieces broken up. Okay now you will need some ice water. I have just some cup, a cup with some ice and water. I'm going to add, I'm going to start with four tablespoons. You can do this in the food processor too if you want to. If you really want to dirty up another dish, go, it's, but it's so easy to do this this way. And I'm going to stir this together and I want this to kind of come into a dough. The reason I say start with four is it totally depends on the humidity in the room where you are cooking. And I can tell right now I'm going to need at least one more. And this is kind of like making a pie dough. But then the best tool to really see where you are is your hands. I'm going to add one more. I think one more will do it. We're going to make a crust. Maybe one and a half. We're making a crust for our pot pie. That's perfect. Now, take a little bit of flour on a surface, your work surface, and then dump your mixture out onto your board. And then just kind of see where you are on your moisture. If you, okay, good example. You see how I'm still kind of crumbly right there? I'm going to add one more tablespoon. It's really dry in here today. So there's just not a lot of moisture in the air. So I'm going to need to add a little more. It really does depend on how much moisture is in your area. And I think that's going to be good. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is take a rolling pin and we're going to roll this out. It would be ideal if you could let this sit in your refrigerator for say 30 minutes, but I don't have that kind of time right now. But if you do, it's better because then the moisture totally gets incorporated into your dough. But if you don't have time, go ahead and roll it out. What we're going to do is we're going to roll out um, our dough. Now, you could, this is where you get to use your own judgment. If you want to roll it out into a flat pastry sheet and then put it on top of your mixture, you can do that. Or what you can do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually roll it just a little more and then I'm going to cut out shapes whatever shape you've got. Let me grab my cutter. Where's my little cutter? Here's one. Whatever shape you've got. And in this case, I'm going to use the little round. And I'm going to just place the biscuits, if you will. They're not really biscuits, but the little pieces of the um, cornbread topping on top of my dough. I mean, on top of my chili. And then I'll re-roll the scraps. Come on, you. And till I get enough to cover it the way I want it. Again, you could roll it out to one big pastry. If that's what you want to do, it's fine. Up to you.
and then you're going to pop this in a 350, no, excuse me, 425 degree oven for about 20 or 25 minutes. This one didn't want to stick together. So I'm going to take the scraps. I'm going to re-roll. All I'm going to do is the very same thing and then cut out a couple more, place in the center and pop this in the oven for about 25 minutes. I'm going to clean up my mess, get this in the oven, and when I come back, we're going to make some snickerdoodles. I'll be back in just a minute. now our pot pies in the oven our potatoes are in the oven our corn is in the oven let's make dessert now in this bowl I have some I have a, a cup of butter and I'm gonna uh, start creaming it with two cups of sugar I'm using my stand mixer if you don't have one of these a hand mixer is fine I just want to let that cream together till it's nice and incorporated. Takes it just a minute. I'm going to add my two eggs, one at a time. Mm. These are snickerdoodle cookies. Okay. Now, in this bowl, I have some all-purpose flour. I'm going to add some baking soda and cream of tartar and some salt. I'm going to whisk all that together. And I'm going to add that a little bit at a time. Let me grab a little cup, just something to put it in. I have a little scoopy thing. I'm going to add this. Turn it down just a little bit. Let's turn that up just for a second. Get that butter good and incorporated. Then I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna add my flour just a little bit at a time because it poops out there and I don't wanna wear the flour. When it's almost incorporated, I add just another little scoop. This is a half a cup measure. Turn it down just a little bit. I'm making a mess. Okay. You just want to add it a little bit at a time. You don't have to go exact half cut measurements. It's just easier to start out scooping it in there. Let that go till the dough comes together. Okay, now I'm going to need to scrape down the sides. The rest of that flour in there. Okay. Remove my paddle. Take all that dough off your paddle or your little um, beaters if you're using a hand mixer. Oh, come on, you. What's the problem? There we go. Now, I love my stand mixer. I've got one at home that I got on my wedding anniversary or my wedding shower. Um, and 25 years ago is when I got married, and it's still going strong. This thing is a workhorse, and it is truly worth the investment. Now, I have here just some cinnamon and sugar that I'm going to mix together. Now, I like to use an ice cream scoop. I have several of these because all my cookies end up the same size. If you don't have one of these, just use a couple of spoons. But what you want to do is get a scoop of your snickerdoodle, roll it in a little ball, coat it in the cinnamon sugar, place it on an ungreased, but I like lined baking dish, 
about two inches apart. Bake it at 420 or 400 degrees, about eight to 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna get these all on my baking sheet and get them in the oven. Now, everything is done. I was just taking the snickerdoodles off of the tray. I let them cool on the tray for just about a minute. Now I'm taking them off to put them on cooling racks so that they can cool completely. Very hard to resist a warm cookie, but these are absolutely delicious. See how we had the, the, the round balls and we don't flatten them or anything and they just, they do it on their own. And they're all even because we used the scoop. So let me get these on there and I'll show you what everything else looks like. That recipe makes a lot of snickerdoodles. So we're just gonna get these on our cooling racks. They're still, a, still very, very warm. Last one. Now, here is our final potato recipe. I just chopped up a little bit of fresh parsley and put on top. And our corn, it makes its own sauce as it bakes. Remember we had the, the um, cayenne pepper, the butter, and the lime juice and lime zest. Pour those juices out of the foil over top because you wanna serve that. Now you could top that with some cilantro if you like cilantro or parsley like I did because I'm honestly not a fan of cilantro. So there's our potatoes and our corn. And here is the finished pot pie. This is a chili base, and I just made a crust out of cornmeal and flour and, you know, the, the accompaniments. Now, you could roll that out and place it as a sheet over top, or you could cut out the circles like I did and just place it, or whatever shape you wanted to, and just place it on top, and you want to bake that. You could also, before you bake it, top the cornbread circles or crust with some cheddar cheese if you wanted to. Now, I did not, but if you like cheese in your chili, then by all means, top that with a little bit of cheese and you'd be good to go. So there is a quick and easy, and we cannot forget, let me just put some on here so I can show you the final meal. They're not quite cool enough, but we can't forget the snickerdoodles. So there's our finished cookies to go with our meal. Thank you for joining with me. Try these recipes and let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna.